In this video I'm going to be talking about the use of PLU4, the uh, Polyhedron Solutions uh, Programmers Toolkit for Fortran programmers. And I'm going to be uh, talking in particular about doing uh, static analysis with this uh, toolkit. And I'm going to be using PFFE, which is the uh, GUI front end. Uh, everything I'm, I do can also be done uh, from the command line, and really it's a matter of taste which, which you prefer to do. All of these tools uh, are available uh, for uh, Linux and Mac as well as Windows, which is where, what, what, what we're running on at the moment. Before we start, I'd like to have a, a, a very um, brief a statement of what we mean by static analysis. It's a, a textual analysis of the source code, which aims to deduce the structure and the dependencies of the various program elements. And in doing that, we don't run the program at all and we don't uh, consider what data might be read in or or used. The uh, way we do it in PLU4 is in two stages uh, which are analogous to the compile and link steps when you're building a program. The, in the first stage we uh, analyze individual sub-programs in isolation and produce uh, symbol files which are I guess you could say are a bit like object files. Um, um, but they are um, purely local um, to the file that they are concerned. Then there's a, a global analysis phase, which you could say is analog analogous to the link uh, of it when you're building a program, which combines all those symbol reports to, uh, to produce a global report. And in addition to that, uh, documentation, uh, which uh, is going to tell us uh, all sorts of useful things about where variables are used and set, where subroutines are called and so on, uh, there's uh, a section of uh, warning and error messages uh, about uh, problems that have been found uh, in, the, in the program. Okay, so let's get going by uh, clicking on the uh, PFFE icon and selecting uh, from the uh, available uh, analysis types that we can do uh, static analysis and then click start. Um, what first thing we have to do is to select a working directory, which is in effect the program's home directory. Um, it, it may well be where the source files are held, though you, you may have a more complicated structure than that, but it's got to be basically the home directory of that program. In this case I'm going to choose AirMod, um, which is one of the Polynesian benchmarks, uh, about 50,000 lines of uh, Fortran 90. And the first thing to do is to add the source files to the project here, so I just click multi-add and it opens the working directory and then I can just select everything in that directory and uh, click open. Uh, I could do more complicated things like I can add from lots of different directories, I can remove some of these files and then when I, if I've got a complicated thing uh, it's probably worth saving it as a project and then we don't have to repeat all the steps again. Uh, once we've got that um, list of files loaded we just click go. Um, and notice we've got um, pause so and resume here, so we can just um, inspect the um, anything that flashes past and looks interesting. Okay, now that's done. The next stage is to um, click yes here, which moves us from running the first stage, uh, the sort of compile-like stage, to the second stage, which is to run the uh, to combine all those symbol files to produce a, um, a global report. Okay, so these are the uh, symbol files and again we just click go. Um, okay, it's already written the report, so now what we're doing here is uh, a quite a heavy uh, bit of analysis where we're writing out uh, reports for every single symbol, which um, you will be seeing later on is, uh, is is quite useful when we're coming to browse the the, the report. When when we finish, this browse button here will be ungrayed and we'll be able to um, to to view the um, report using uh, an internet browser. Uh, so we're getting quite close to the end now. Uh,
okay there we go it's now available so I can click browse and that will open up uh, the internet browser and what you see here is uh, essentially two panes uh, you can move it around of course and the left hand pane is a, a sort of contents and the right hand pane here will have uh, reports and so on so for example we could look at uh, uh, sub program reference reports which uh, gives us some um, information about all the subroutines where they're or sub programs where they're called from uh, and what they themselves call in fact there's a, a call tree as well um, and notice everything on the in this right hand pane is is hyperlinked so I can I can click uh, there and um, keep clicking and follow things through uh, source code is available too, um, but that's not hyperlinked. Um, one interesting uh, possibility is that we can, uh, if we right click on, on one of these symbols, we can open it in a new window. So that's useful. One of the ways we use this uh, tool is, uh, you know, we, we, we may have, a, if we have two screens, we may have uh, one of this report open on, on one screen and on another screen we may have um, Visual Studio or, or whatever programming environment we're using and then we can uh, use this to uh, to inform what we do in Visual Studio so for example we might use it to um, to work out what the consequences of making a change to a particular variable will be in other parts of the program that we're not immediately looking at um, module variable usage reports, uh, common variables, parameters, um, there's all sorts of stuff here. I'm not going to go to it, through it all in detail, it would it would take too long, but um, one of these reports is available um, on our website, so you, you can just go to it and uh, click through, as I'm doing here, uh, at your leisure. Um, let's, let's see what else we're going to do in this, um, at this point. Uh, the, the m I mentioned that there was an error and uh, there are error messages or information messages uh, uh, coming out and, and that's, that's a summary of them. To drill down into the detail of these uh, we look here. So for example uh, um, this is this is a uh, parameter has been defined with different values so it's got the same name but it's got different values in different places. Let's see if, uh, if we can work out what's happening there. Um, well, it's defined in in different places, and it's used. Uh, it's got different values in 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 each of those. Um, a module variable appears in more than one module. Okay, again, this is not really uh, an error, but it, it it may it may be indicator an indicator of uh, something that's wrong, but uh, it may equally be just an innocent um, innocent thing. But it's quite useful to have all this information. If you really don't want to see uh, a particular one of these messages, then we can con configure um, the thing so that they just won't appear and won't bother you. OK, I want to go briefly back to uh, look at PFFE here. Uh, we flash between the uh, front page and running spag and running GX check, but there's, there's configuration pages in here too. Uh, so, for example, I mentioned that you could um, you could suppress some errors, and there are pages here where you can set the severity of every single uh, error that comes out. You can um, uh, have uh, turn um, reports on and off, and, and uh, often vary their their um, um, the detail that's that's in there. Um, more error reporting and um, and so on. Uh, for SPAG, uh, there's also a lot of configuration uh, pages for the SPAG, uh, but really for static analysis, um, uh, we're not uh, so concerned about that. Often it can, it's, uh, um, it matters when we're uh, restructuring a Fortran program, so we're writing a new version, uh, and uh, things like case and spacing and indenting and uh, exactly how we restructure it um, are significant in that case, but they're not uh, an issue when we're doing static analysis, so um, it wasn't really um, a problem. Well, oh, one one other point perhaps I should make is um, when you're running SPAG, it is uh, it works a bit like a compiler in that um, um, if you have a program with Fortran 90 modules, 
then it's important to compile the module before you compile programs that use it. Uh, and that's, that's an issue for compilers too. So uh, uh, the, the, uh, when we, when at, at the moment, it just puts them in a list. So the way around that, uh, uh, it, as things stand, is, is probably just to repeat this, this stage uh, two or three times, and then you're, you're pretty sure to get all the dependencies sorted out. Uh, we are working on a, a newer version which in integrates our automate tool which uh, which uh, deals with those uh, module dependencies in a very uh, civilized way uh, and that will be integrated into a future version of PFFE. Um, well thanks for listening that's all for today uh, I should make a note that there are uh, other videos uh, in this series covering other aspects of usage of FLU4 including dynamic analysis and coverage analysis and restructuring and so on so um, if you're if you're interested do do watch out for those videos again thank you for listening <laughs>